The first half of the 19th century saw the rise of cell theory spearheaded by two German scientists, Matthias Schleiden and Theodor Schwann. These two minds sparked a biological revolution and brought forth a new world dominated by countless tiny living organisms unseeable to the naked eye. From the very start of cell theory, many scientists wondered how cells are formed and if they replicate, and as cell theory progressed, many new theories were brought to the table. Schleiden and Schwann themselves first believed in a theory called free cell formation, in which some sort of intercellular substance crystallizes to form cells. Free cell formation dominated early cell theory for about three decades, and many scientists' attempts to prove it would actually stunt the growth of the field. That all changed, though, by 1870, as a few bold scientists, namely Barthélemy du Mortier, Hugo von Moll, and Robert Remek, all shared their ideas and evidence that cells actually divide and multiply, rather than manifest through some sort of spontaneous crystallization. The process they had discovered was binary fission, and it is a simple form of cell division that happens mainly in prokaryotes, or cells without nuclei, such as bacteria. By 1873, the first step was taken into understanding cell division in eukaryotes, or cells with nuclei. German zoologist Anton Schneider sketched out some steps of cell division in eukaryotes in his 1873 paper. The big takeaway from his sketches was that he noticed a nucleus transforming into rod-like structures. Schneider interpreted from this that a cell undergoes deformation when it replicates, but another German biologist named Walter Fleming would examine this process in much more detail in the next couple of years and reach a much more detailed conclusion that others before him could not reach. Fleming's genius lay with his experimentation with acids to create a certain type of dye capable of highlighting the components in a cell. His most successful mixture included a combination of chromic, osmic, and glacial acetic acids and came to be known as Fleming's solution. In 1879, Fleming published a paper in which he coined the term indirect cell division. He called cell division in eukaryotes this because he noticed that the content in the nucleus had to transform strictly before cell division could take place. The dyes he used to distinguish parts of the cell unveiled a fibrous scaffolding inside the nucleus, which he dubbed chromatin, which has Greek origins and means stainable. By 1882, Fleming had published an entire book entitled Cell Substance, Nucleus, and Cell Division. This book was monumental, for not only did it coin the term mitosin, a German word that translates to mitosis, but it also described, for the first time, the accurate phases of the cell division process. In this book, Fleming made a distinction between the progressive and regressive phases of eukaryotic cell division. The progressive phase begins with the chromatin appearing as threads and ends with the threads lining themselves up in the center of the cell. The regressive phase begins when the threads split themselves into two halves and ends when there are two new daughter cells. These threads would go on to be named chromosomes, meaning stainable bodies, in 1888 by German anatomist Heinrich Waldeyer. Fleming's description of the process of mitosis, especially given his technology and limitations at the time, is quite remarkable. He, in fact, didn't have proper equipment to prove that chromatin in the nucleus is what turns into chromosomes for mitosis, but he did claim that fact for the sake of continuity, and it turned out to be correct. Fleming made a significant impact on biology and cell theory through this work, and helped move scientists away from cell theory's early days and into a new age dominated by work with genes, splitting cells, RNA, and DNA. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.